What's going on YouTube? Clay he's all back again with another Final Fantasy Brave Exvius banner review and this time we have the actual characters from Dragon Quest XI coming into the game with probably what might be the shittiest ran event we've had in FFB. Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm gonna try to bullet through most of these units. We do have one, two, three, four, five to go over with the Great Dragon sadly not being one we're gonna go over too much. And, I, and I'm gonna give you guys some damage rotations on each of them and tell you guys where they stack up in the meta. But I don't want this video going on too long because I also need to discuss the key system. So let's get into it. Before we get started with this video, I do need to say it is sponsored by Amazon Coins. Amazon Coins are a great way for you guys to save up to 20% on your Lapis and Bundle purchases inside of FFBE. You guys know I've been using Amazon Coins for almost two years now, so I can back them up fully and say it is the best way to get your Lapis. You just need to download the Amazon App Store on your Android device or Android emulator. From there, download the FFBE game just like you normally would. And then you can buy the Amazon coins from Amazon at a discount up to 20% and then use those to buy, you know, bundles or lapics, etc. inside of the game. And this is, again, the best way you can get the most discounts. I use it every single time I pull, I buy lapis, I buy bundles, I use Amazon coins. And if that interests you, click the link in the description below to get started today. Now let's get on with the rest of the video. So first up on this banner, I want to talk about the two banner units you can actually use lapis and ticket summons to go after. And that's going to be Great Dragon, the four star going up to six star and then Mortagon the big bad guy at five star going to seven star base so talking about great dragon again not going too much in depth I love the memes coming out of this that people have been showing me on Twitter uh, because the great dragon is not going to be increased all the other characters should be increased later on similar to Kingdom Hearts Cloud uh, Sora Riku and Kingdom Hearts Sephiroth but great dragon is going to be left uh, in the dust here we're looking at his TMR way of the dragon 20% attack just period uh, on the materia but then you get a 40% extra boost with a fist weapon now if you plan to go out there and use true dual wield you plan on putting a fist weapon on your units this is going to be great for you it's 60 percent attack now it's in a tmr form it is limited but it is in a tmr form so if you end up getting one of these maybe if you look in the future and you think you need this material i know a lot of people don't that's something to look at other than that not really much to speak of here divine ruination chaining baby hey kingdom hearts cloud kingdom hearts sephiroth uh, uh, but other than that there's not much to discuss here on great dragon besides the awesome memes that came out for him so uh actually on the banner where you can summon with tickets and lapis we have mortagon the big bad guy five star base going up to seven star magic damage dealer and remember we're going to get even more mages i know we've been hit by mages soul uh sukiko the new uh fina uh, a lot of different units going up there and then we're going to get even more with cg terror which i know a lot of people are going to be saving for uh x death and then cryo krill however you say her name uh so we're going to be maged out and a lot of these mages are going to be around the same amount of damage unless they do big boost to cg terror which i'm hoping for for all you guys and myself uh, i probably will be going for cg dark fina which should be in a couple of months as well so it's we're going to have a lot of those different units, so that's why it's tough to be pulling for mages right now, because there's so many to choose from, but then it's also like almost a bad investment unless it's super easy to get, you know what I mean? So we have Mortigon's Cloak here, Defense 22, Magic 50, Dark 40%, great accessory for Magic Damage Dealing units with that added bonus of Dark 40%, but it's nothing I would go out of my way for. I would not be TMR moogling this, and, uh, or excuse me, prisming this from the TMR moogle that you should be able to get from the King Mog shop. Um... You know, you probably have something better, but if not, and you guys really need this in your arsenal, there you go. It's pretty straightforward, no explanation needed. Looking at a staff, we have a giant 180 uh, rod, excuse me. It's called Mortagon Staff, but it is a rod. Uh, magic 180 on that thing with uh, Mortagon Staff uh, attached to it. Increased magic evasion about 30%. Sorry about this, something in my eye. Uh, recover MP 7% per turn. Nice MP 7% per turn. Magic evasion is also nice. You can't stack it up, but you know, having that on you, you might dodge a little bit of magic attack and make you live a little bit better. But nothing too crazy to be chasing after in my opinion trying to get four of them heck no looking on through his kit we do have the ability to do ice fire and dark damage that's what he's going to specialize in and more so over in ice and dark damage um he does have the ability to triple cast all of these abilities here um his three cool uh, again i'm going over these pretty quick his three cd abilities one is uh kefuddle it's like a ability it's, it's a break ability for attack and magic that actually gets stronger as it goes on most time they get weaker this gets stronger up to a 79 percent break which could be pretty powerful when you're wanting to mitigate a lot of that damage. Um, he has Disruptive Wave, which is going to remove all buffs from all enemies. And I know that sounds like it's not that important, but it really comes in handy when you've broken a bo boss, you have all your imperils, you're ready to do your damage, and the boss buffs itself. And you don't want to have to apply that cleanse or that break again. This right here will just remove all of the buffs from the bad guy without taking away your debuffs, which is awesome. And then he has Winter's Might, which is going to be one you go to very often. Decrease Ice and Dark Resist 100% for four turns of all enemies, and increases magic by 250%, which is going to be great. 
Uh, moving on down through his passives here, we do have, um, and, and then his other abilities up here, his actual damage dealing abilities. We do have a way to put down ice resist and dark resist by 80%, but you're really going to be relying on this one right here. Um, and his actual damage dealing abilities we use will be unlocked uh, by using Uncanny Strength, as you can see here. Refresh MP, so he isn't going to have problems with MP, it doesn't look like. Um, and but depending on how much MP refresh you have in your squad. Uh, and then it enables his two damage dealing abilities you really want to be using for 11 turns. And then you're going to be casting Uncanny Strength again whenever you don't have this up or you need some MP or something like that. Uh, next up, we go through all of his, uh, his uh, passives here. We do have Devilish Defense uh, that he gets to cast if he gets hit by a physical or magical attack. Uh, and then he also wants to be, when single wielding any weapon, true double hand magic ca uh, caster we have here. Um, but <laughs> look at this, dude. They're, they're going to let you do whatever you want. Like, increase magic when dual wielding. So he has both right now. We both have both at 50%. Let's look at Devilish Defense real quick. Devilish Defense is going to put MP up 80 to caster. So again... Very, very nice for all that triple casting you're going to be doing, trying to get that MP up, and I think a lot of mages out there need that. We even have another 7% here. The other 7% would be from his STMR that most people probably won't be getting. Um, he does have a Rod Mastery here, uh, some Petrify Resist, which is great, Resist the Silence, which does come in handy. Uh, LB going up, but we're not even going to be using his LB in his, um, his, uh, his rotation. He does have Dual Wield automatically, and he casts Warlock and Pet Power, um at the start of the battle. So let's look, check out that. Warlock is evade three physical attacks. Dude, this guy can live. Uh, evade three physical attacks. And then we have uh, pet battle. Pet, pet, pet battle. But say pet battle from WoW. Pet power. Remove all uh, buffs from all enemies. Nice. Uh, increase. So so if they preemptively buff themselves, autocast after three turns. That's great. That's awesome. That's a cool passive. That's amazing. Increase modifier to all of these things after six turns, so he gets more powerful as we go through. Autocast after nine turns, four times. So as the battle progresses, he gets even more powerful, which is... The, the, this, this passive right here is one of the best ones I've seen in a long time. I love that passive. Very unique. Uh, we can look at his... Um, uh, his LB right here, dark magic damage 50 times to all enemies, uh, decreased dark resist 100% uh, for 5 turns to all enemies. More than likely, you're not going to be using this in his rotation unless you can really just bust out that giant dark damage. You're chaining with a friend and you can just go ham with this. His rotation is going to look a little something like this, and it's going to be um, absolute zero chaining family, which... It's kind of sad because a lot of the mages coming out are going to be CW, Chaos Wave. He does have Chaos Wave, but it's not his main damage dealing abilities. As you can see up here, it's only for his uh, fire and then the fire, ice, and light damage. Ooh, he does a little bit of light damage. So what you're going to be doing on turn one is you want to cast Uncanny Strength, of course, uh, to unlock Freeze Out and Night Terror and give you that nice MP refresh. You want to cast Winter's Might to get that nice Imperil and then Magic up by 250%. And then you're going to cast whichever one of these two abilities that you're deciding that you're going to go with. Are you going with Dark Damage or uh, Ice Damage? Cast one of these to do damage. These, you know, these are the best abilities he has uh, until these are unlocked, which they'll be unlocked the next turn. Then after that, you are literally going to triple cast either ice damage or dark damage over and over and over again until you need to recast Winter's Might and Uncanny Strength. And then you just kind of weave those in while you're doing one of those other two abilities. That is how simple this unit is when it comes to doing damage in his rotation. And he's really powerful at doing that damage. He's up there when the top three top four when it comes to damage dealers here on global um so he's not a bad pickup obviously if you need a mage however again with all the mages it's going to be really up to you if you want to go for mortagon and i hope that review was good for him so those are the units you can actually get when you're summoning on the step up or on the normal summon banner the other three hero units which i think a lot more people want to get their hands on people love heroes you cannot get through summoning you can't get through using tickets you can't get through doing your daily you can only get by using this key system uh so let's talk about the key system here uh, you guys have to have five of the golden keys and you can select any of the three that you want. And how do you get the keys? Well, you can get four on this step up. So one, two, three, four, every 10 plus one you do, you get a key. So on the normal banner, it will be for these two, Mortagon and the Great Dragon. You'll get another key. So you can get a gold key, keep going, and you get 10 summon coins. So uh, you end up having to spend, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16, plus 5K is 21K. Uh, you end up getting five keys. You can use that to select any one of them that you want, but only a five star base. Uh, and then you can also go ahead and get a prism in the shop. Each of the prisms are in the shop for 80 summon coins. You get 20, 40, 60 here using the other 5k. Uh, you go up to 80. Uh, or sorry, you go up to 70 because it's only 10 when you do the 10 plus ones, right? So then you have to do another 5k to be able to get a prism. So now we're up to like, uh, what is that? 26,000 lapis uh, to be able to get one that you want to choose, right? If you just want to take your gold key, doink, grab a unit, you love 11. Get 11, get his prism, boom, 26k. Uh, you had to summon on a banner you probably didn't care about at all, but there you go, you get him um, and the 
again, you were you, you cannot get them through random summon, through random tickets. The King Mog is going to be hard to do. Speaking of the King Mog, uh, before you go ahead and go ahead and spin that prism up real quick, you can get a random one of the three from King Mog Grinding. That's right, they give you a free. They are so generous, they give you a free five-star base one of the three randomly. You just have to grind the event to 30,000 points to get it. Without any kind of, like, unless you spend money or uh, lapis or tickets on a banner, you probably don't give anything uh, a hoot about uh, in this thing. You're going to have to grind your little butts off to get this thing, and you get one randomly. So that's why you probably want to wait to use the prism. And let, you know, that's the hard part, though. You wait to use the prism. Your guy's not seven star. You're not getting that nice King Mog bonus currency you could be getting. Um,. It's a, it's a terrible system, guys. So then you randomly pop one out here. So you can wait on that and then, you know, correlate your, um, you know, correlate whoever you get to the prism and then use the five star, put them in there, yada, yada, yada. You can go like that. So at 26,000, um, you are guaranteed to get somebody to a seven star. That's how it's going to work. At 21,000, you're even guaranteed to get someone to a uh, seven star. If you grind this event and you don't care if it's random because the key will pop out like 11, you didn't really want 11, but then you use your five gold keys, put them in there. 21K, you're getting one of these heroes seven star, but randomly. Uh, go up to 26,000, you guarantee whichever one you want. Um, if you go up even further beyond to 25,000 more lapis, so that's going to put you guys at what? Uh, so we used 26,000 before, uh, 25K lapis puts a 5,100. Uh, lapis or 51,000 lapis, excuse me. You guys can get two uh, seven star units. Uh, however, one of them will be random. You won't be able to choose the other one, right? Because one of them is going to be based off the random unit you get, and then you get to choose one, but that you, you can always choose another one that you didn't get, right? So you're getting one randomly, and you're getting another one you get to choose for that much lapis. So it, it, normally for well spenders, you yeah, didn't seem that bad, right? Like, whoa, that's like two step. That's like full, two full laps. And normally I end up getting screwed anyway, and I get this thing. But the problem is they're eliminating any RNG for any type of player who doesn't want to be spending massive amounts of lapis, which I don't think they should be. Okay? I don't think you should be on this banner because you're summoning on a banner you don't give a shit about in order to be able to get the units you actually do. And you can't ticket summon. You can't get them off the daily. You, can't, you have no hope at it. And to put it all on top of that, it's a King Mog event where they make you grind forever to get that free unit. It's a terrible system. And then to get the next unit, if this Hey, I'm a collector. Do I love Dragon Quest 11? I want to get all three of them to get the next one. It's even more lapis, right? Because you got to get all the keys again, 25k, and then you get the prism. You can finally buy that other prism with the summon coins once you get up to that amount, which you should be after you summon all these other amounts. It's a ridiculous amount of lapis, and it completely cuts out any kind of free to play or even me. Even me, I'm not doing this kind of stuff. Well, one, I don't love them, but two, like. It's just a, it's just a convoluted system that I do not want to support. So, guys, that's the best way I can describe it. I hope I did well. Um, it just doesn't seem good to me. But now we're going to move on to actually talking about the units and how good they are if you get lucky enough to get the one you want. All right, guys. So our first unit uh, that we're going to talk about between the heroes is Eleven, the main character. Uh, going to be a five-star base going up to seven-star physical damage dealer, mostly dealing with fire and li lightning damage and bolting strikes. So, hey... All you Esther fans out there, get a new chaining buddy if he shows up on your friend list. Looking at his TMR, which I think is incredible, and I'm going to be using a TMR Moogle from the shop, from the King Mog shop, because they are in there. All of them are in there. You can buy two of each of them, which is great. That's a great change. I love that being in there. Well, change, you know, I think it changed from the JP version. Correct me if I'm wrong. This thing right here, Attack 40 Helm with Defense 21. So you're thinking, ah, there's a lot of those. There's not a lot of things that give you increased LB damage. And while it might only be 20%, anybody out there knows when you're looking for LB damage or an LB damage dealer, this is what you're doing. So this is just, honestly, I think we're safe from even having to summon on this banner besides the King Mog grind to get that Moogle because... You can just TMR, if you've if you got lucky enough to get a TMR Moogle Prism, here you go. This is a way you can do it. I think this one is definitely worth doing it because I am going to be doing it. Uh, moving on, we do have his Sword, uh, Supreme Sword of Light, an incredible STMR, Attack 180. Um, and then we also go down here, we have Supreme Sword of Light, increases LB damage 50%. Again, anybody who likes LB damage is going to like this sword. The only reason I am kind of hesitant on it is there will be a unit in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and say who it is because you guys know the CG units are rolling out already. It's going to be CG Noctis. Obviously, we're getting all these uh, heroes being CG, and he'll have a sword similar. I think it's like six or eight less attack with some MP added on it, uh, but gives you guys the same amount of uh, LB damage up, and I know a lot more people are going to be wanting to summon on him, and he should not be limited, uh, so it will be much easier to obtain, depending on how much lapis you just want to throw at this banner right here, and obviously 
long the unit is actually incredible cg noxus as long as you don't mess it up in global so very very good sword if you get it awesome if you still want to go for it now great but there is an option in the future that you guys can go for with a little bit less attack with some mp added and giving you guys that lb damage up so this unit right here great for tmr or stmr Going on down through the unit, this unit is uh, somewhat complicated when it comes to his damage rotation. He is going to be doing a lot of fire and lightning damage, as I said, with Bolting Strike coming in. The unit can almost, with his damage rotation, if you wanted, could probably keep it up at all times. Uh, triple Cast, because he does get it at the start of the turn with his TMR ability. Uh, but there's going to be a turn where I think we let it fall off. So, he has a ton of CD abilities. That's what I'm talking about with being complicated. Um, he has the ability to put down fire and lightning resist by 100%. He has two big damage dealing abilities uh, that also put up modifiers for another uh, ability in the game and unlock Quadra Slash, which is an extremely powerful damage. So, you're going to do lightning and fire damage with these two things. So, pretty much Giga Slash and Flame uh, Splitter are going to be huge damage dealing abilities. Uh, uh, things that have a you know chain cap at the end. That's probably the way you think about those. Um, and then we have uh, Giga Gash, which is uh, decrease fire and lightning resist 120% for three turns to all enemies, and it does a physical damage 10 times to all enemies. So it's a little bit more of an imperil, but the problem with using Giga, uh, Giga Gash instead of the Luminaire Awakens is the fact that this one gives you triple cast. It gives you LB fill rate up, which we do need to use as LB. And then we also get 200% attack. So this is the one we're going to be going with. We're going to sacrifice that 20% uh, in peril there. And then we have, uh, I, I'm so bad at saying this, it's in like all kinds of games, uh, Yig Dragons uh, Blessing, which is uh, available in turn six. Recover HP 100% to all allies. Revive all KO'd allies 100%. It costs his LB. So it's like an uh-oh button, a little bit of support. You can smack that on your damage dealer and you can triple cast it in if needed. So I like that he has that for uh, added extra effect. Going down through his uh, passives here, uh, Scion of Dundra, we have that as a passive every turn he's casting. Oh my gosh, MP 10% per turn. Let's talk about that for a minute. Nice. Uh, he gets 10% uh, HP every turn, and it can't be overstated how much that can help your healing, things like that. He can dual wield. Um, he has lightning resist up. He has guts, which is awesome, uh, which is great. Uh, and I use that all the time. 100% guts has come in handy so many times with my review, let me tell you. He has uh, increases equipment attack 50% when dual wielding, so he has true dual wield. He has dual wield already in his kit. He has the modifier chaining up. Um, he also has single wielding any weapon. He has 100% uh, on single wielding any weapon. He also has a sword mastery here that you guys can see. Uh, his TMR ability, you do want to have one. Increased attack 40%, MP 30%. Going to be great for all that triple casting. And then it also gives you uh, Savior of... Erdrea, I hope I said that right too. I suck at saying these names, uh, which is going to give you guys a increased modifier to Falcon slash uh, after two turns and after five turns, it gets even stronger, which again, kind of like we just talked about with the other unit, um, increased HP, sleep, paralyzed, confused, just need petrify. Uh, and then we get another 50% to true dual wielding and 50% to true double hand. So you have 100% true dual wield, and then you have 150% to true double hand. I would build him true dual wield because I like it way more. Uh, it's very uh, good for me. So, had, and then I'll, gotta talk about his LB real quick. Physical damage 15 times, ignore defense 50%, so a 30 times modifier, not the highest in the world, but it does give you guys three peep performance, which is gonna be his triple cast. So, at the beginning of the turn, you guys all have triple cast unlocked. How are we gonna go about doing this? Well, we're gonna go ahead and cast Luminaire Awakens first because we need to get that attack up, we wanna get that LB, LB fill rate up, and we need to imperil the enemy. Again, we're casting this over the 120 for all those other extra benefits we get, plus being able to triple cast for four turns seems pretty good. Um, we're not gonna go into a Giga Slash or Flame uh, Splitter yet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just cast the um, Falcon Slash for, I think, twice is what we're gonna do here. Um, and then we're gonna slowly, like, do the damage as we go on so after that we're going to go ahead and head into giga slash or flame splitter because we have so the next turn uh falcon slash is going to be his main damage dealing ability until we unlock quadra slash which we'll do with these giga slash abilities here and the reason we want to break them up is so that we can be using uh quadra slash as much as possible right so you guys are going to pick which one you want to use it doesn't really matter flame splitter or giga slash it's going to do nice damage and um it's already going to have that on the ability, so you don't have to have it on your weapons, lightning and physical. But you're probably going to want to pick one of these, fire or lightning, to have on your weapon uh, so that you can go in and just uh, use the imperil when you use things like Falcon Slash. So what this ability is going to do is big damage to one of those elements and unlock Quadra Slash and put up Falcon Slash's um, modifier, which is great. So if we go ahead and look down to Quadra Slash, it's going to be his best uh, chaining ability that we can unlock that is not already uh, previously unlocked. Big damage uh, on the modifiers ending right here with the chain capping with Bolting Strike there. After that, you're going to do um, Flame Splitter, whichever one the next one is, and then you're going to throw in the double Quadra Slash, uh, and then you're just going to go to town with Falcon Slash and make sure that you use his LB 
uh, when you have it up if you need to be having your uh, triple cast back up because that's going to be your other way to enable it. And then you just go through that rotation again. When uh, After six turns, you're going to cast this again to make sure you have your attack up, your LB fill ray up, your triple cast, your imperils back on, etc. You may need, because you see this is only for four turns and this is a six turn cooldown, you may need to throw this into this rotation and make sure you get that... Um, to get that uh, imperil in, which you might want to do earlier, to be honest. Thinking about it now, because it's tough because of it unlocking uh, Quadra Slash up here, and you want to be using Quadra Slash to do the damage. It's really going to be up to you. He has this weird ebb and flow. It's it's where you are in his rotation. Do you have imperils on? Do you have triple cast? What do you need to unlock? Are you dealing with damage? Giga Slash and Flame Splitter on cooldown, as always. So not too complicated, but you need to make sure you have triple cast up all the time, the imperil applied. If you need to, hit that LB button to get that triple cast back up, and then uh, keep going on with the rotation we were talking about. If, if, if all comes uh, down to it, Falcon Slash is his last resort if he doesn't have um, Quadra Slash open. So he's going to be doing uh, nice damage. I think he's up there around... Uh, Esther levels. I don't think he's any higher than her, depending on how much you can put on him, but he's going to be up there. He's going to be able to do the damage, and that's his rotation in my review on 11. So I'm sitting here thinking, man, I, this video is not going to be that long. I'm trying to go through fast. It's not working. That was a seven minute review on 11. I'm trying my best, guys. So we have Serena, and Serena has been devastatingly cut, cut down from her JP uh, version, which she really didn't need to. Going to be a healer, Razor. Um, TMR is. Uh, Serenica's uh, surplus going to be defense 34, magic 29, spirit 67, confusion nullification, has the effect, uh, increase MP 10% and resist charm by 50%. I don't think it's the greatest uh, at all. I don't think you should be going for this. I don't think it's very, it, it's just not that different than what you get from other things. The confuse resist kind of doesn't really matter because a lot of these units out there are going to be using, again, CG Fina's hairpin or some other way to get rid of uh, these nasty status elements, and it's really easy to equip supports to do that. So not the greatest TMR in the world. Looking at the STMR, though, very, very strong. Increased spirit 60%. Chance to ignore fatal damage 100% when HP is above 1%. So they have guts uh, happening, period. It's going to happen with a giant spirit stat. I would love to have this on my healer so they withstand the fight and they can raise everybody up just in case I have a wipe coming at me. Um, but again, it's just so hard to get a hold of this STMR. It's one that I'm going to have to probably forget about uh, and just let go. Looking at this unit, this unit uh, has a lot of perks. As you can see, we can put up our Ice Resist, Wind Resist, Earth Resist, Light Resist, 70%, and recover MP while you're doing that. If we go ahead and go ahead and, uh, go ahead and, go ahead. If we click this down here, we do have uh, the Double Cast, which can pretty much dual, Double Cast anything except for Soul of the Saintess, which I do believe in JP she could Double Cast. She's going to recover MP 100% to an ally, except for herself, and then she, um, uh, she sorry, entrusts her LB which it should be able to be w, uh, w cast because Myra could do that. I don't know why they thought this was so hard to be able to put on. It, it really sucks. She has uh, magic mitigation 30%, and then she has a heal that comes on after that. I really like that. It kind of stacks up. She can put uh, resist to all status elements. She can put resist to break, stop, and charm, which is awesome. Get you, she covers everything kind of like... Uh, uh, Folka already does, which is why if you have Folka, it kind of seems like a no-brainer just to miss this. Um, she does have an auto-revive, 80% to one turn to one ally she can W-cast, which is great. She has MP recovery. Um, revive all KO'd allies uh, and put an auto-revive on herself when she does that, which is phenomenal. Um, we look at her cooldown abilities. Increase uh, resist to all status elements 100% for three turns. Increase resist to break. Stop charm 100% for three turns to all allies. So what's the difference between this and what I just read? Three turns, stop charm, turns to one, to one ally. This is to one, this is to all. So make sure you pay attention to that. Much, much different. I like the name, Snap, Crackle, Poof. Uh, super Snap, Crackle, Poof. So it's the super version. So make sure you pay attention to that. I almost missed that. So that you have to use the CD for it to beat all, and it's only on a three turn. So that's going to be up to you how you want to do that. Um, we have Restore uh, HP 50% to all allies. Mitigate damage 40% to all allies. So if you don't have that general mitigation, you can find it here in a 40%, which is a pretty high amount. Uh, restore MP 30% uh, to all allies. Mitigate damage taken 40% to all allies. So we have have an HP up, and we have an MP up with that damage mitigation. Uh, you can't use this till turn 10, but get rid of all the status ailments. Everybody goes up to 100%. Recover HP, so you revive them up, and if they weren't dead and they're still hurting, get them up to 100%. Cure all those nasty uh, uh, breaks, stop and charm on them, and also put an AoE revive to 100% on everybody. Uh, for five turns. This is only available on turn 10, so you got to make it all the way to there to be able to use it, and then it's on a 10-turn cooldown, but uh, a lot of fights do go to 10 turns, uh, so you have that option there. Her LB is also going to put an auto-revive up on everyone uh, that can help you out, and it also has removes all buffs from one enemy. It's not AoE, but you know, again, I, I I see the super value in this, so you don't have to reapply breaks after you happen to dispel. You don't have to reapply in perils. I like that a lot. Uh, she has Paralyzed Petrifies Resist here, which is great. A bunch of stat stuff going on. She enables uh, dual wielding of one-handed weapons, so she's going to be able to stack that up. Can she put shields on, actually? 
Uh, she cannot. So she's going to have to be du uh, double, have two things in each hand. Um, we have uh, physical evasion, 20%. Some wind resist, LB going up. Some dark resist when equipped with a staff, which is great. If you have a rogue owner, we're having even more wind and dark resist. So that's 50% dark resist right there. Um, have her TMR, STMR equipped. We have a bunch of stats going up. We have some MP recovery. Little sister in war every turn. Little Sister in War increases LB gauge one to all allies every turn. So you're getting some uh, one up to all your allies every turn, which is good there. We have Stop Resistance. So she has the ability to cure Stop, put Stop Resist up, and she's not going to be stopped herself, which is great. Uh, she can counter at a very low rate with Grace of Goddess. Auto Revive 80% HP for two turns to herself. That's actually pretty phenomenal if it procs. Uh, she has a lot of ways to keep herself alive, plus with her STMR. It kind of all goes together. And then she also has 20% on these two, uh, which is going to recover 50 to uh, MP to all allies, which is also great if it in ends up procking. Looking at her LB, it is light magic damage with spirit scaling, which really won't do that much. Uh, heal HP a lot, split over all allies, refresh MP a bit <laughs> to all allies, and put an auto revive on everyone. That's the big thing you're looking for here. Um, but it also lets you uh, keep your MP uh, up and your HP up on allies, which is great to be pairing with it and it doesn't cost that many lb crystals so you should be able to spam this within her so here's my review on her and if you guys should be pulling for her if you again she is going to be buffed up but i'm pretty sure her jp form is still around what uh, a little you know a little bit better than meyer obviously um so i don't know why they nerfed her so hard she didn't really need it um but if you don't have a super cool healer you don't have meyer folka um you know warrior of lights uh lena you can go for her, but it's really just so hard to obtain her. I think this is a skip, and it's sad because I love the sprite, and I, and I like the unit. And last but not least is Veronica. So this banner has you covered. If you like evil bad guys or tiny little lolly girls who are really mad, and I know you do, you're good to go here, baby. Let's get it. Uh, Veronica is going to be a magic damage dealer. I'm um, going to cover Chaos Wave, Absolute Zero, Divine Radiation, Bolting Strike for you guys out there that want to uh, have that. Looking at the TMR, we have Channel Anger, which is going to be increased magic 40% with a 50% uh, true du double hand, excuse me, when single wielding any weapon for magic, which is actually pretty, uh, pretty uncommon in this game currently uh a lot of people out there might already have their set but if they don't here's a great addition for you guys to get in your materia to make sure you hit that cap on true double hand magic uh next and again you guys can get the, if you guys aren't going to be pulling like most people aren't you guys can use a prism if you'd like on this i don't think it's a bad idea uh next up we have crown of eternity which is going to be defense 34 magic 61 spirit 32 and it's going to give you guys decreased mp use 30 percent this is going to be great phenomenal stmr for any of those magic damage lords out there in the future uh because they're all going to be triple cast Casting, quad casting, pizza casting, and they're going to need that MP. So this is, uh, and this takes all that MP uh, down by what is it, thirty percent? So probably not going to get my hands on it, but it is a phenomenal uh, STMR if you do. So looking over um, our girl here in. Um uh, Veronica, we do have the uh, damage dealing abilities that are going to be covering lightning, fire, ice, and light. So she covers a lot of different ones. However, uh, we're not going to be using too many of them, sadly. We're not going to be going in using too many of them. Uh, we're going to stick to mainly um, a non-elemental damage dealing, and then uh, light probably is where you're going to be going. She does... Interesting, interestingly enough, have a CD ability at a six star available in turn one. Recover th uh, 300 uh, MP to herself, and then the next turn, put up a Kafriz modifier. We're not going to be using that at a seven star, but that 300 MP we're going to be using. So it is a three turn cooldown. She is, should not have MP problems with that. I would hope because you can put it in. As you can see, I have her um, dual casting up, but her triple casting is the same way. Uh, sadly, she doesn't get that on turn one, but you can kind of weave that into the rotation if you end up getting star for MP, which I like her having that. Uh, moving on down, again, like I said, even through TMR abilities, there is no way to start the turn out uh, or start the battle out with triple cast. So we're going to have to be looking uh, somewhere else for that. If we look at her big seven star damage dealing abilities, ice has been removed. It does not follow us over here. We have whip crackle, uh, which is lightning, kafrizzle, fire, magic burst, non-elemental, and then we have uh, Kaboomal, which is going to be her light damage dealing, and her light damage dealing should be doing the most damage out of either one of these, two, uh, out of all of them, So, which is why we're going to kind of lean on that uh, if necessary. If we look down through her CD abilities, we have two we can cast on turn one, and one we have to ca wait till turn four. Increase magic 250% uh, for three turns. Restore MP 100% to caster. Again, she's very good at staying up there on that MP. Increases LB gauge 54 to caster, so she gets her LB up, uh, and then she enables Echo Warrior. Echo Warrior is going to be her triple cast. Uh, Echo Aura is going to be one you can cast on turn one. Decrease spirit 74% for three turns to all enemies, so a huge spirit break on all enemies. Increase magic 200% to self, so not the 250 
50%, but we have to wait till turn four on that. And then enables for five turns Echo Warrior. So she doesn't start out with triple cast, but triple cast is going to be on her to be able to be used uh, throughout. We also have Scion of uh, Serenica, which is going to be a 20 turn cooldown, available turn one anytime, an uh-oh button, like we keep talking about. A lot of these units have that. Restore HP and MP 100% to everybody but yourself. Get all those uh, stat breaks uh, for everybody but yourself. Uh, increase everybody's uh, stats by 250%, except for yourself, for three turns. Uh, put the resist to all the breaks, stop, and charm for everybody but yourself, and inflict unresistible death to yourself so this is an oh button to save your team but you better be hoping you have a re-raise on her because she's going down for doing it but it could come in handy it is a very powerful ability that you may end up using uh moving on in the future looking through our passives um nothing too much to hit home for we have resist to confusion um resist to sleep we've got some fire and light resist stuff these are things you'll see passively she will auto cast magical might magical might is going to be 120 percent uh, buff to herself so we're going to make that 200% with one of her passives anyway, or one of her CDs, excuse me. Um, we have increased magic 50%. Again, uh, light resist up if you have a robe on, so she could, does have a lot of, uh, looks like, elemental coverage there. Um, increase MP 30% when equipped with a rod. I don't think you're going to have MP problems. I'm not a child. Increase equipment magic 100% when single wielding any weapon, so she has 100% innately so far. Uh, with uh, so we'll go down right to our TMR ability. That's 200%. Man, this unit is kind of fire. <laughs> Increase LB every, uh, two for every turn and getting magic and MP up. Um, going through here, we have some mod increases, some charm resist right here. Uh, some more magic going up. Magic burst boost uh, start of battle. So we'll take a look at that. Magic burst boost. Um, auto cast after three turns. Uh, we have some magic burst getting some multipliers up as it goes through. So we're going to be moving to the magic burst. We're going to start out with it. Uh, but we're going to be moving to that. So she seems like she's more of a non-elemental damage dealing unit. She's going to, I think she'll eventually focus on magic burst as we go through her rotation. So she does cover all those elements if you need it. But most of the time she's going to be using magic burst and non-elemental chaining ability because of all these damage modifiers. She even gets them going up for magic burst on her LB. And then Luminary's left uh, hand, uh, we have if 20% chance to cast it. If we end up casting it, everybody's getting their LB gauge up by 5. Speaking of that, Mighty Magic Burst LB, uh, huge magic damage, like almost 60 times to all enemies, no element attached to it. And increase modifier 5 times for 4 turns to caster, can't be dispelled to Magic Burst. And again, that's the same ability that's going to be buffed up here uh, with that Magic Burst being cast. So moving throughout through the uh, unit, how do you use the unit? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, on turn one, you guys are going to be using Echo Aura because um, you can't use Ring of Rack, of Ru uh, Rack and Ruin at first. So you're going to use this, enable uh, your triple cast, and then you're going to move on to Kaboomal. Uh, that's going to be so you're going to be able to double cast here. So you're going to cast Echo Aura, Kaboomal. The next turn, you're going to cast Kaboomal, Kaboomal, Kaboomal with a triple cast. Uh, when you get to turn four, so you're going to keep doing Kaboomal until you get to turn four, where you're going to unlock more triple casting going on. Put your LB up, 100 MP to cast, or put up your uh, magic by 250%. Move on to our LB here, which is a it's it's 54. It's it's high. It's it's hard to cast. That's why you got to use that thing. But you want to cast this so you can get that nice modifier to magic burst. And then we're going to be moving on to magic burst, where you guys are just going to be smashing the crap out of this because it gets all these modifiers up from waiting for the turns to happen with this passive, along with the LB. And you're going to kind of stick to that. You know, if if you uh, eventually you guys are going to have to end up casting Ring of Rack and Ruin again. You may need to cast Echo or again, depending on what's going on. If you want to get that big break, and then you go straight back to magic burst magic burst magic burst so she can use kaboomal kafrizzle whip crackle in cases where the boss or an enemy is resist to non you know non-elemental damage like you can't do damage with non-elemental but she wants to be casting magic burst for most of her damage dealing uh because of all these different multipliers going up how does she rank in the magic damage dealing uh units she is almost catching fina here um depending on if you can spark chain with her from what i've been reading on the uh damage charts um and I think that's great, but the problem is we can't really get a hold of her unless you want to go ham. But uh, if you do get her, and you love her, and you want to use her as your magic damage dealer, she's going to be a great choice. She's really up there. There are a lot of choices for you guys, but Veronica is a good one. And with that, I tried to make it quick, but it probably isn't. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Is this banner... Should you pull in this banner? Hell no. Hell no. Not even for the king. Like, like if you want to use four-star tickets, okay, or tickets, a couple of tickets to try to get some great dragons to go ham, you know, try to help you with this King Mog grind that's going to be insane, sure. Are these units amazing? All of them are. All of them, uh, the damage, uh, Serena sadly is let down because of, you know, they change her from her JP form, but she's still a very good healer for anybody who's missing out on that next tier healer or a new player. Um, all the damage dealing people are up there on this uh, damage dealing charts, especially the mages, they're topping that chart. Problem being is Eric's not here, and 
uh, the other uh, the other bad guy. Um, and it's just so hard to get a hold of him. I wouldn't support this type of uh, thing in the game. I'm not going to. You can spend your money however you want. You really love Dragon Quest. Get in there. Use that uh, lapis. There are going to be banners coming out in the future that are even better than this one, obviously. And it's just not worth going through all these bells and whistles and loops to try to get yourself one of these uh, units. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below it, how you feel about this key system. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm the only one that doesn't like it and you guys actually dig it. Um, subscribe for future content. Click that bell to make sure you're notified of my videos. Follow me on Twitter. You can add me on there. Ask me questions at any time. And join my Twitch stream, which is going to be happening tonight, where you guys are going to be able to come in and we can talk about this. Grind that King Mog for the rest of our lives. Thank you again to Amazon Coins for sponsoring this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.